Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Napick. Every week, we talk with interesting people in a variety of professions for ideas to enhance your success in all aspects of life. Successful Living with Bill Napick starts right now. Here's Bill Napick. Welcome to the show. It is Successful Living with Bill Nampick, and today we have a very special guest, a very accomplished businesswoman right here in Houston, Texas. So we're going to have the opportunity to talk with Judine Deakle. Her company is Texas Floor Covering, Inc. We're going to hear about her story. We're going to even learn about commercial flooring as a bonus and have a super opportunity to talk to this very accomplished individuals in her business over 30 some years. Judine, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Bill. Well, it's awesome. First of all, I've never talked to someone in the flooring business. And not only that, you're here in the largest, fourth largest city Mm -hmm. in the flooring business, very competitive as well. So first of all, let's tell people in case they have not heard of your company, Texas Floor Covering, let's tell them a little bit about your marketplace, who you're serving, and your company? Uh, well, we, we work with a lot of building managers. Uh, buildings, uh, we probably have over 300 buildings that we work with. Uh, we do a lot with Methodist, MD Anderson, Memorial Hermann, a lot of facilities uh, such as the Houston Astros and Toyota Center. Yeah, and, they got a lot of floors there yes, over at yes, Minute Maid Park do. last I checked. Yes, yeah, we have a lot of <laughs> fabulous uh, customers and uh, you know, well, 30 years, 30 plus years mm-hmm. in business. And one of the things that I think about when just the idea of flooring is, first of all, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Anybody listening now, if you're driving, mm-hmm. don't look down at your car. Keep your eyes on the road. But if you're somewhere else, yeah. you look down, mm-hmm. there's a floor, right? Yes. So that was a stroke of brilliance just to be in that business because floors are everywhere. Yeah, and it really is because in commercial real estate, uh, when you sign, everybody that signs a new lease uh, gets carpet and paint. Um, sometimes they don't move walls. Sometimes there's not construction, but there's always new carpet and paint when they sign a the lease. So mm-hmm. it does keep us pretty busy. So the variety of jobs, that's kind of interesting because we're talking about Minute Maid Park. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many square thousand square feet of floors there are there and they're all varied as well in the different sections Mm -hmm. but as you also mentioned the business that might be as you mentioned the ones that get the carpet and paint about is there an average size square foot of that sort of office Um, that you're doing for for your your typical build out is is usually five thousand square feet or so it's 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 not terribly big of course we bid the full floors all the time sometimes we'll get two and three floors um at one time you know but a typical build out is you know five to ten thousand square feet so that happens on a regular basis regular basis we'll do you know 15 of those a week sometimes um, 15 a week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, we stay pretty busy. Um, we've been able to diversify ourselves. And, you know, when the when the leasing was down, you know, our medical industry picked up. And so, you know, during COVID, we, we did lots of work with hospitals and doctors and, and just kept the ball rolling through through this time. Well, I don't know if it was a factor, but it also makes me think that during the covid periods the lockdown periods that was probably an opportunity for any business Mm -hmm. to maybe have time where the work the workers were at home and so forth okay Mm -hmm. we have a few renovations here Mm -hmm. it's time for a new floor Mm -hmm. so that sort of happened i guess yeah and during the lockdown down we were extremely busy Um, we were deemed uh, immediately as a essential business because we did so much in the medical field you know, so we we stayed busy right from the very very get go. Uh, just our our whole office, a couple of people stayed home at, at the beginning, but uh, within a few weeks, our whole office was back up and running, and and because we were so busy. Well, when we think of floors, as far as the business right now, sounds like you're busy, mm-hmm. and you're retired just just the office jobs, maybe fifteen a week, mm-hmm. and I'm guessing that doesn't include a specialty job where it may be a larger venue that says hey judine we need floors here so you have different kinds of jobs going on at any given time right yes yes we have uh, tons we just um, got two floors of uh, memorial herman and katie we just were awarded those two floors um we just did a lobby renovation at 580 westlake where we did two floors there and it's a brand new building you know, now where is that 580, 580 westlake? westlake is just this side of highway 6 just east of highway 6 on i-10 the brand south, new building south side it's not a brand new building during COVID, COVID, or during Harvey, uh, several of those buildings flooded. That building did not flood, 
but uh, they moved everybody out because of the roads and stuff. But it is, it's a beautiful building. We just renovated the lobbies, lake views everywhere. There's duck ponds and, you know. Sounds nice. It is, it is gorgeous. It, it, if you want if, if any of the listeners want to, you know, to contact, contact Transwestern. And there's a lady named Michelle Wogan that you can contact her for, for leasing opportunities. It's, so there's it's a room there for, for me. Uh, Maybe I want to go. You might. You might. It's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous building. Open my own building. business. I'll, I'll set up camp there, huh? Yeah. And we just did the one right next door. And these these are both connected to Hershey Park. So we did, did a lot of renovations at the one next door, which is, I think it's 13501. And it's a lake view as well. You Two seconds and you're on Hershey Park. That building, I think, is Regency Square. And Sarah would be the person to contact there. Just beautiful buildings that we just, those are the most two recent jobs. And that's. Well, that, that's a nice thing, too, as far as certainly satisfaction in business, whatever we do. I think you have the kind of work where you start the project or you look at the project. It's estimated, right? And then the job's done. Mm-hmm over a certain period of time and then you have the finished product that Mm -hmm. must be satisfying as the business owner just to see that yeah i I love going to see our finished jobs of course nowadays we don't have the luxury of doing that back in the day we had to you know field measure everything you know when i started this business we had to literally go out to each job and field measure them and don't have that anymore we have the technology to be able to have a pdf sent to us we do a takeoff there um, send a proposal and Get the jobs. Well, as we think of the Houston economy, the world economy, even sometimes, but right here in Houston, so your business is healthy right now, Mm -hmm. sounds like. And let's say two years ago, what was it like? And five years ago, is it is is this a very steady business? I think it's very steady, and just as I said earlier, you know, we we do a lot of tenant build out, and just about everybody gets carpet and paint. So, you know, uh, some of the contractors might not be as busy during this time uh, because, you know, they're, they're moving walls and electrical and plumbing and so forth. But we're just the carpet and just about everybody gets new carpet when they move into a suite. Well, I bet people are wondering, and I want to talk about how the, you started the business mm-hmm. and how it's evolved because that's a fascinating story to have the longevity. Mm-hmm. In 30 plus years, a lot can happen. Businesses don't last sometimes mm-hmm. after they start after a couple years and then there are companies that have been around hundreds of years you're on the way to that hundreds of years if you can I think <laughs> if you could get, if you could make it fast that 30 mark you're on your way no doubt so and then the other thing i want to make sure we talk about are the choices one of the things as far as flooring when i think about flooring and any kind of decor item that's a part of architecture business or residential man the choices abound but mm-hmm. let's go back and first, tell people your website in case they want to take a look at some of the, the work on your website. It's texasfloorcovering.com. So simple. Texasfloorcovering.com. And third, let's turn the clock back, Judine. We're talking with Judine Deekel, owner of Texas Floor Covering, texasfloorcovering.com. As we turn the clock back 30 plus years, mm-hmm. you have a healthy business now. All the new technology that you're able to do jobs in a bigger, better way, faster. But in the beginning, let's tell people how you started the business and and what it was like then. In the beginning, I did work for a couple of commercial flooring companies uh, and learned quite a bit. Decided uh, to start my own business. But you cannot, you can't just start a business and go right into commercial because there's so much liability insurance. Uh, it's just way too expensive. Any business is, yeah. is expensive to start, and, yeah. and except maybe a have... lemonade stand, you get a couple <laughs> dollars. But, but yeah, to start anything substantial, you yeah. have to have some money and and certainly the drive yes. and a vision. Yeah. So nowadays, it's we we have to have five million dollars liability. Um, we have to have a uh, hundred thousand on all of our trucks. We have workman's comp. It's it's quite a bit. It's quite a bit to do commercial. But that is my love. I love commercial. So uh, so you know I work towards that. I started out calling on companies that didn't require that. Uh, there was a, I don't know if you remember San Jacinto Savings. That was one of the sure. companies that I, I called on back then. And I did just did their repairs and some of their repos and Compass Bank and, and then the Houston Astros, which wasn't called Houston Astros back then. It was called Houston Sports Association. I called on their uh, facilities and asked if I could do their repairs. And boy, did they ever need a lot of repairs. I mean, it was a, a lot of old carpet there. And we just made it look so good. We Uh, did all the repairs and then they asked me to start taking up the carpet from OTC. We would put that carpet down for OTC. 
across the hall there and uh and then then we would take it up right before rodeo store it for them and then the next year put it back down again and we'd have to get all those pieces together and and uh one day gary keller he's long retired now he he asked me if can you install the club level can you give me a price to do the club level and i was like gary that is uh just you know way too much i i, I, won't, I won't be able to get opened up with the mills you have to have a storefront 30 years ago we were, yeah 30 we're years okay. ago you had to have a storefront you had to pay cbd if you didn't have that and and he said well how much do you need uh, you know to buy the carpet and i said about sixty thousand dollars and the next day he told me to come by and pick up a check for sixty thousand dollars and i paid the manufacturer ordered the carpet and and from that day forward it just kind of blossomed from there well, also we'll tell people if they're listening outside of Houston, maybe even inside of Houston, as Judine mentioned, the OTC, that's the Offshore Technology Conference, which is a giant trade show. I don't know if it's our largest one that we have, but it happens at like March, right? Every mm-hmm. March or, or that time of year. It's so right it's a big radio. trade show. And of course, trade shows wherever they are, a lot of them, I guess they still use carpet and you were part of that world Mm -hmm. back then give us an idea as you're you're talking about the sixty thousand dollars back then did you have a place of business or were you working from your home and your car or uh no i i did start out from home and then i moved into just a little office yeah it was like a one-room office off a long point so it wasn't the best neighborhood but it was something that i could start start started at but, uh, you know, w- one of the things about uh, the Houston Astros is the, the people that were five or six tiers down from Gary Keller are now the presidents of uh, the Houston Astros, Toyota, Dynamo. And so those relationships that I built with them back then blossomed into what we have today. And I'll tell you, you cannot work with nicer guys. I mean, they will not let you pay for lunch. It is just, it's, they don't want anything but good service. And that doesn't happen in our industry. Everybody wants a free lunch or everybody wants something. And, you know, and it's just not with them. I mean, they will not allow you to buy their lunch. And it's just, it's just amazing how good they are. Well, I think also we're hitting upon a business lesson that when you are in business, whether it's your own personal brand that you're building, your reputation, which Mm -hmm. is so important, but as you're building a business too, or being part of an organization, treat everybody with respect. Absolutely. And I don't care if it's the janitor. I do. The janitor can... And so do I. That I live by that. Yeah. The janitor one day could be the boss, but even still, that's not why you're being nice to him. No. But it turns out that as we meet people along the way, whatever their station or our station is in life, you use that golden rule. Mm-hmm. It's going to serve you well and make life more enjoyable for you. In this case, you still have relationships with these people, and now they have risen through the ranks, mm-hmm. and you're enjoying the longevity, and so are they. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's unbelievable. And that is a tremendous business lesson. We're talking again with Judine Deacle, Texas Floor Covering, right here in Houston, TexasFloorCovering.com. Let's tell people, Judine. So there you are. You're building your business, meeting people. I'm sure you're finding, we're talking about the nice people you found. There's probably a couple people that, you know, didn't respond or you just kept on going. Mm-hmm. But what, what were some of the other things in those early days that maybe somebody's starting a business, listening right now, and they're starting a business thinking, wow, here's someone that really has done well in these 30 years, but does, it wasn't easy. What, what are some of the other business lessons where that you learned and that you adhered to as you were forging ahead those many years ago? I think number one is just base everything on godly principles. You know, start out your morning praying and, you know, that work-life balance. I get up every morning and pray and read my Bible and jump into a workout and take a shower and go to work. And I try to treat everybody with respect. And, you know, of course, we're going to make money on every job that we do, but I don't hide anything from anybody. Anytime somebody wants to come and look at my books, they're welcome. You know, um, we are going to make money. We're here. We're not. We're not here. We're here to get up every morning and not not get paid. So we we are definitely going to make money on it. But I'm not ashamed of that. I'm not ashamed of that. I treat everybody with respect. You know, I'm pretty hard on the installers. Uh, I want a perfect job every time. Customer service, and you know, we really strongly believe in that. Let's talk about the installation, just out of curiosity, as I think about it, as I've seen floors put in in my home mm-hmm. eh, a couple of years ago, I guess, and that's an interesting job right it there. It is, it is. I mean, it's not easy. No. 
and I'm talking about a home, mm -hmm. but you're a lot of times at least or around the 5,000 square foot mark and maybe more. So that's a big job. When the installers go to the job, mm -hmm. they have to have all the stuff there, the mm -hmm. tools to cut, to place, to measure, right? Yeah. And like you said, <laughs> you it's, run a tight ship, so yeah. it's got to be right. And when measurements come into play, you don't want to be off by by no, too much no no how does that work oh that being short is, is just a nightmare so you, you definitely want to measure twice you know so if the installer if you see a phone call coming from the installer <laughs> the job started oh no he's not calling to say everything's yeah. great or yeah. is he <laughs> no um you know we we have it there's there's such down to a science and i think being a woman-owned business you know we're we're very very detailed for occupied spaces we deliver green boxes we deliver green boxes to every single office and they they pack up those boxes leave the boxes there we've got one installer uh, taking his measurements one installer taking pictures of the space uh, one installer is cutting and installing every everybody has their job when they walk in that door and it's just boom boom you would not believe how fast we can do a half a floor in a day it's just it's it's crazy how fast and people when i tell them that you know this is a, a day job or this is a two-day job they're like there's no, no there's no way and i'm like I, I know our guys i know what they're capable of doing and this is we can do it I, i've had people come in after we've done their occupied space and said that they walked into their office and thought that we didn't replace it because everything was back exactly the way they left it and they looked down and saw hey, that we'd we replaced the floor. floor so we we measure all the furniture put it back exactly where it goes and so everything that we do in the commercial world we've got it down to a t after 30 years and that's fascinating so okay let's take the number 5,000 square feet right mm -hmm. And what, what kind of floor would they be putting down? Pick an example. Well, your to, choice. Today, it's carpet tiles is the biggest trend. Okay. Carpet tiles and vinyl planks. Um, you'll see with Broadloom, uh, our installers charge more money to move furniture. So you really get a little bit better value by going with carpet tiles because you're not, you're not putting your money in the labor versus the carpet. And the carpet tiles are also good because if you spill coffee on one tile, yeah. you could pull it up and replace it yes is that part of the, you can. the concept you can but the the trick to that is every once in a while maybe have the engineer of the building or somebody uh to to pull up a couple of those in the wear areas and transfer them into rooms that are not getting worn so that it doesn't uh, completely wear down because you you replace one tile in the middle of your hallway and it, it, it sometimes you can you can tell that it's a brand new tile versus worn carpet so so you want to you know move those around and we do install it with releasable glue so you can pick it up yourself and put it right back down like a post-it note yes exactly <laughs> or maybe not let's take the 5,000 square foot job let's say it's carpet tiles the installers are putting it down how many installers do that type of job if it's if it's a typical job you budget and say okay i'm going to have three people out there yeah. on the job or what it, it depends uh you know on the job itself on what what it's entailed if if there's demo in there what type of demo it is um you know sometimes we might have You're to removing stuff yeah so we, okay. we we look at the big picture of, of what needs to be done and then we send a, as many guys as we need to to complete the job and then also the contractor that we're working with may say i need this done in two days and when we did toyota we had to rip out all of the wood floors that were glued down and we had exactly 11 days to do it before their game. So how many we, square feet was that? Uh, that was probably 12,000 square feet of wood that we had to take up. I love how you remember up. this stuff. I know. <laughs> we, had to, we had to take all that up and then install plank, uh, ceramic tile planks. And that's that's a little bit harder because you're having to wait for the thin set to dry. And then you then you, the next right. day you put the grout down. So ceramic tile does go a little bit slower. When somebody tells me I have this timeline, we have this window, we put as many guys on it as we need, get the job done so okay the 12,000 square feet you removed all that out so you did the job in less than 11 days mm -hmm. yes yes we, we demoed all the wood which you have to get all that glue the splinters uh get all that up scrape it down and then you know install the the planks okay so going back to the beginning again before you had your business there you were working at other flooring companies mm -hmm. for how many years year two years uh, five a couple of years all right so there are a couple years. years and when you said to yourself somewhere you must have had the the light bulb say well i want to be in business for myself mm -hmm. you must have enjoyed or saw the the value of the flooring business for you to decide to stay in that mm -hmm. so 
I don't know, that's not obvious, but why did you choose flooring? Did you like it that much or you saw the massive potential that, hey, everywhere there's a floor? Or what, or what? You know, that that's just the job that I got out of school and I just happened to get that job as a bookkeeper for a flooring company and, you know, just... I mean, you could have opened up, a restaurant. Yeah, I could have. <laughs> I don't think I'd ever want to do that. That just seems like a lot of work. No, I wouldn't either. So. Not only that, at least the flooring, when you have it in stock or if you mm-hmm. have to stock a certain amount, it doesn't go bad, right? Mm-hmm. No, it that's doesn't. That's a nice thing, yeah. yeah. It doesn't. And we, we may have to order a job and it may stock in our warehouse uh, for a couple of months before we're able to install it. Just out of curiosity, I used to be with several companies where I was the ma- representative of a given manufacturer. So I would call mm-hmm. on distributors that would take my products and tell them the merits of my product, why they might like me better than the other person or I'm better to deal with, all those things. And our, here's the features of our, our thing. But I dealt with people where they were stocking my product to some degree. So my point is you have vendors that you're representing, I don't know how many different kinds of flooring companies, Mm -hmm. but quite a few, I'm guessing, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So you deal with a lot of representatives from these various companies or you deal with the the companies themselves or Mm -hmm. how's that work? Uh, I deal with a lots lots of different manufacturers. I try to stick with a handful of them uh, so that we give you know a handful of a lot of business so we get good service from them. You know our reps when we call them they're on our doorstep the next right morning with a sample and so so if you if if I went with every single manufacturer out there there's so many of them uh, you would probably only give somebody a, a job here and there and I, I just feel like you get a lot better business if you're given you know, a handful of them. So there's a handful of reps that I that we worked with over the years and, and give as much business as we can to. And you're able, and you're able to better serve your customers as mm-hmm. well by having that consistency. Mm-hmm. And also, you're building these relationships too. Mm-hmm. I mean, from the, the, the value of relationships, we talked about the idea of we treat everybody with respect, mm-hmm. integrity, all that, no matter who they are, whether we're doing business with them or not. But the other side of the thing, it's nice to have those relationships. I mean, even though I'm not in the business I was 10 years ago, I still talk to some of the people that I used to call upon because you become friends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we do. And that that makes life, uh, our working life, more fun sometimes and more rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, we love our reps, and 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 you do. You you really almost have to sell your reps just like you sell a customer. You know, if you want the best pricing, you know, you really do have to, um, you know, build those relationships with everybody. Did you run into any, or are you running into any shortages? We hear we heard about lumber shortages. Now that's returning to normal. I'm hearing, but what about the flooring? You know, we've uh, you know that's we we do that research and we try to push the the ones that are stocking. We we push the the manufacturers out there that have had the raw materials and that can produce. And we try to always show quick ship programs where the manufacturer might you know stock several of those quick ships, and so we can we anything under two thousand yards you can get pretty quickly. Uh, so you know we we haven't had too much problem here just recently we're starting to get that but we've been able to avoid that for quite some time for the the carpets that we push a little different than the auto industry Mm. i ordered a car (laughs) a second car back in april Uh i just got it uh, last tuesday Uh, that was was okay but 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 it was a long experience but in all my years of many years of buying cars and trading cars i've never done that before Mm. april and i kept getting getting emails uh your your delivery date's been updated to be to be another couple of weeks later but mm-hmm. anyway so that's great that you didn't have to go through that oh yeah getting the, materials uh, yeah. yeah no it did not uh we did we did really good through that's that awesome. so and we're still we're still going through it you know uh, just every once in a while we might get something like armstrong just filed chapter 13 so and that, what's we that had armstrong flooring Armstrong, uh yeah we do we had a lot of orders pending with armstrong and they just filed chapter 13 and so we're switching products left and right here um jobs that we've already had ordered but but it, it, you know there's so many manufacturers that copy each other so it's pretty easy to find a crossover of some if one if one if one's not available uh, it, the same with carpet, vinyl planks, VCT, um, sheet vinyl, it doesn't matter. It, just about every manufacturer copies each other. So if something's not available, you can cross it over and find somebody that has stock. We're talking with Judine Deagle. She is the owner of Texas Floor Covering Incorporated right here in Houston, Texas. We're going to take a short break. Come right back. Stay with us, please. As we move from room to room, building to building, 
Business to business, we are walking on floors of some type at all times. At Texas Floor Covering, we are there to serve you since 1989, helping you, whether you're an architect, designer, building manager, general contractor, a sports arena, government agency, we are there for your commercial flooring needs. Texas Floor Covering. Give us a call at 713-862-2444. That's 713-862-2444. Our website is texasfloorcovering.com. That's texasfloorcovering.com. Check us out. We are here for you, Texas Floor Covering. Welcome back to Successful Living with Bill Nampick. I am your host today, Successful Living with Judine Deekel. She is the owner of Texas Floor Covering right here in Houston, Texas, covering floors all over the place, big, small businesses, even Minute Maid Park. Right, Judine? Yes. <laughs> That's a big, a lot of big flooring opportunities there. It is. Uh, we just probably finished over a million dollars worth of work over there. Um, they are just uh, incredible, incredible to work for. Um, you know, we've, we've built out the Gallagher Club. Um, you know, there's just so many fantastic clubs there. you got to go to a game. <laughs> well, that would be awesome. The other thing, as I think about it, we think about floors again i don't think about them that often but they're there everywhere and i think people listening right now unless they've just made a floor purchase in their Mm -hmm. business or home you don't think about it all the time but Mm -mm. when you think about the scale of jobs you're doing at the bigger scale five thousand square foot that's big Mm twelve thousand like we talked about a minute ago but when we're going into minute maid park in these larger venues then you have the factor of where Mm because last time i was there thousands of people walking all over the place yes. so you had that element as well yeah. right yeah and that's one of the things that we we will discuss with the client when we're uh, making their selections you know what type of wear is it you know if it's just a regular tenant build out they don't need that much for somebody like minute may they need the top of the line people coming um, and going and uh, we did the club level probably seven years ago and that that cart that tile is just still just as good as it was seven years ago so it really wears i mean the the vinyl is is probably going to put us all out of business because we really don't so have to replace minute. carpet anymore <laughs> don't you want a different color hey, come on I, know. <laughs> I know but it wears so incredible and you know back in the day when vinyl first came out it it really wasn't that pretty we, we were doing it in birthing rooms and it wasn't that pretty but now they have this technology where they scan actual wood and so I have to walk down and scratch the floor sometimes to to really see if it's real wood floor or not it's just so incredible the the colors and things that are coming out now well as you mentioned that one of the things that is daunting when we think about floors or we think about other decorative elements now floor is a big wear element too is selection I mean, we are overwhelmed, I would think, in 2022. Here we are. When you look at paint color, you go to the the hardware stores and you see all the different paint colors. I'm like, I have no idea. How about white or gray? I'll take that. Yeah. But when someone comes to look at a floor for their business with you, how how do you get past the selection to make that simple because there's so many choices, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, it's it's by appointment only. We're not open to the public, so um, they they let us know when they're when they're going to come, and we we schedule an appointment for them. And we ask them, what colors are you looking for? And we've already been awarded the job, so I know what price range they're in. I know that they're getting vinyl plank and carpet tiles and what have you. So I have that. So I, then I you know send them a send them a um, a, a quick email uh, to ask them what colors they're they're looking for grays blues whatever or sometimes if they don't have anything in mind i'll look at their logo and i'll print their logo out and put it on the different carpets and see what carpet goes complements their logo so when they come in you know we have seventeen thousand square foot it's just a thousand samples for them to look at i don't want them to get overwhelmed so i pull the colors that i think that they're going to need and I, i put them on a selection table once they pick the carpet then i'll help them pick the famica for their for their lunchroom, I'll help them pick their doors. Uh, anything, anything that's in their space and their build out, we will we will center that around the flooring and help them pick everything. Uh, help them pick their paint. We have all the larger paint samples. We don't do paint or we don't do Famica. We don't do anything except for the floor covering, but we will help them organize the whole thing. Sometimes they'll bring their decorator or their architect with them, and um, and we'll just organize it. And we have it down so much to a science of what we pull out, so they're not looking at the entire showroom. Um, we have it so so organized that we can usually get them in and out in 30 minutes. 
and I'll have the doctor or whoever is is from that lease. They'll sign off on the selections. I'll send that to the building manager or the leasing agent or the contractor, whoever whoever needs those selections. I send the, those selections over, and and it's pretty simple. Well, you've touched upon it just a minute ago as far as technology goes. So, again, here we are right now, 2022, 15 years ago, the floor technology was different, right? Mm-hmm. So when did it really be? When did it really come into where we're at today? Because I guess the the floors are more wear resistant. There's more selection. There's more texturing of the of the things that are not real wood, and 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 if they're not wood or tile, they're engineered floors. I guess you call it right. Yeah. And that some of them have a certain texture to it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, some of the facilities don't want the texture because they say it's harder to clean and stuff. That's so, right. so you know, and we we look at this the 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 lease that they signed. If they signed a three year lease or a five year lease, usually the building manager will want us to show them that quality. They want it to to you know wear for the remainder of their lease. So we're looking at products that are going to at least withhold five years. And usually that's a 20 mil product on a vinyl plank. Although right now with the prices going up um, and there, we just get a new price list almost two, every two weeks uh, because of the supply and demand, with that going up, uh, a lot of people are starting to go down on their mill, mill layers. You know, some, some customers are asking for 12 mil and we have, we've given it to them, um, but, and I, we have not had any problems thus far, but it just seems like everybody's wanting to come down a little bit on on quality because of the, the the high price of demand. Well, when we talk about the rising costs, okay, I'm going to relate re- relate this to the restaurant business. We've heard a lot about, and also grocery stores, how food has become more expensive. I had someone here talk about the price of chicken in their restaurant is double now than mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. not that long ago. Mm-hmm. But in your case, the materials, the floors are more expensive. Mm-hmm. You have installers that are driving trucks, oh, and they're, they use they're gas. asking for more pricing every day. I mean, they're, the gas prices are killing them, so they're right. So we're they're they're giving us a new price list every day. So you better buy now, right? I know. Buy, <laughs> let's buy. If you're out there, you're listening. You have five thousand square feet in your business, or even larger. Buy now, lock mm-hmm. in the price because as so. My point is, as a business owner. Mm-hmm. I guess the good part is every day is different. <laughs> every day the price is different. It, yeah. But how do you manage these rising costs and yet still keep the business and keep the customer happy? Where you, yeah, I guess you have to. You know, I have to switch gears quite a bit. You know, sometimes you know I have my five favorite mills that I work with a lot, and um, you know when their price goes up, I have to switch gears and go to somebody else, and somebody else is ready to get my business, and they're willing to give me better prices. So I've had to flip flop a couple of times on some different different um, manufacturers just to keep those prices down. I'm always negotiating, always, always negotiating. And, you know, that's that's why you pay somebody like me to do it versus going to a go and buying your product. You're you're looking for me to get the best quality and let my let me do all the research and find the best for your money. So if you have a five dollar allowance, I'm going to find the best product for you that's available in that in that allowance. Not only that, I was going to say it earlier, your business experience of 30 years with the relationship, you know a lot of things and all that knowledge translates to helping the customer in a better mm-hmm. in a better way with that knowledge that you have, mm-hmm. the installation in terms of everything. So that that's very important. Mm-hmm. How do you do it? It's not easy, huh? It, it's not easy. It's but not it's, easy. I There's a lot of hats. You excited. There's a lot of hats, and I do. I love. I I do love going to work every day. I I, I get up, and you know, I'm pretty pretty happy. And uh, it, there's some challenges. Uh, you know, I've had some mishaps with employees and different installers, and you know, we've weeded through some some you know not so good installers. But, you know, even then, you know, every business is going to have a fire once in a while, but it's who puts that fire out fast. You know, we've had some not so good installers and uh, immediately I went to the job, boom, we're replacing it. You know, I won't even think twice about replacing a job that's not installed correctly. If it's not right, it's not it's right. it's not right, I will not accept it. So, you know, we hold a little bit of a retainage back from these installers. The new ones, of course, don't have that much retainage there, so it comes out of our pocket. We do, we do worry about our reputation out there well also at any given time you're handling and i'm 
it depends is the answer for everything almost in life. It depends, <laughs> but, but you're handling X amount of jobs per week, right? Mm-hmm. So that could be like you already mentioned one thing you're doing 15 times, sometimes a week, mm-hmm. but you're doing X amount of jobs per week, just in the balancing of those, just let's say there's what 20, is it odd to have 20 jobs a week? No, not all at right. all. Right. So that's, to me, that's a lot, but mm-hmm. in each job you have installers mm-hmm. in the equation, materials, distances to drive Mm -hmm. and and then the customer making sure they're happy how do you juggle it's it's not me juggling at all i I, you know i might wear some different hats once in a while but you know we have two dispatchers uh one's driving the forklift the other one's uh, got the paperwork in front of them going over the job with the installer have some blueprints there to go over it with them you know we've got two people on the order desk that place orders Uh, we've got several estimators that do nothing but just sit there all day long and estimate uh, we have bookkeepers bill our jobs so that we can get paid and do our collections. And so so there's a there's a whole team of us that are working. So it's it's not me. I mean, I, I could not do it without my employees. And, and sometimes I do feel so honored that they are here and they're willing to work for me, you know. So, so that's, I, I, I love them. And they're listening right now, <laughs> right? No raises. <laughs> <laughs> they're thinking, well, as soon as she gets back, we're going to say, hey, you sounded great on the radio. And oh, yeah, how about that raise? But that's the thing. You have to be nimble because, man, those prices are ever-changing. So mm-hmm. you, you, you're you there. You look at all these things happening, and then and then you go from there. Okay. And everybody, welcome to the Flooring Channel right here. We're talking floors 24-7 on this station, right, Judine? Mm-hmm. Floors all day long. We're talking with Judine Dekel, Texas floorcovering.com. Yeah. Texasfloorcovering.com. Check out our website. If you need a floor, you're in, you have a business, you're getting ready to have a new lease, you can give her a call. Now, there's competition in every field, and that's a good, healthy thing, no mm-hmm. doubt about it. Give, give us an idea. I already know one of your distinctions, and, and so do the listeners as they've been listening, and that is you're a perfectionist. Yes. You want things to be right. If they're yes. not right, you make them right. Mm-hmm. So right there is a company distinction. What other company distinctions and how do you distinguish yourself in the, I mean, Houston, Texas, we have tons of everything in terms of competition in every field. How do you, how do you do it? Uh, I, I just say customer service, you know, I mean, we are uh, customer service. Uh, we treat our, our, our customers like family and sometimes uh, they, they are our family during the day. You know, I, I love I love every one of my customers, and you know the the people that I did not get along with over the years, I don't call on them. You know, I, I I'm not that good of a salesperson that can do business with you know people that are not good uh, to us. But uh, you know, we just we we work so hard. You know, and not only that though is you know we give back. I mean, we do we we do give back. Um, there's organizations that yes. are part. Of, people can see that on the website. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yeah, there's several um, inspire women. We give we give to her on a monthly basis. Uh, she she uh, works with young women that can't afford to. They they have a passion to teach God's word, but they they can't afford it. She's given over forty thousand or scholarships over the years uh, to these women that want to be in the ministry. Priority and, and that's called inspire women. Inspire women. Anita Carmine. Uh, another monthly uh, organization that we work with is Priority and Associates. Uh, I think they, they changed their name to Crew now, but um, what that was is they target business owners like myself to make God your first priority in business. So they have speakers. They've had speakers of like the old Exxon guys that said, hey, if I, if I wouldn't have looked the other way, I wouldn't have gone to prison. And so we have some really amazing speakers there that really gets you thinking that, hey, always do the right thing. Always do the right thing. Make God your first priority and you know, and stay, stay true, stay true. Don't, don't be dishonest. And another really, really big passion of mine is life. I support anything that uh, is for life. Uh, Jensen Franklin has a, a bus that he, uh, a mobile bus that does free ultrasounds in different communities where the risk is high for abortion. And uh, so I, I support that. I support, you know, I, I think, uh, I think there's, when a mother sees her baby, you know, it's, 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 you know, she sees it on an ultrasound because what they tell us is it's just a glob of cells. You know, it's a glob of cells and there's nothing there, but it's a live baby. And I think if a mother sees that baby, she's she's going to choose life. And so I support things you like would that. Hope. I would hope. And so far, since he started that, he's already saved 8,000 babies. So it's it's so far so good. And that organization is here in, in Houston? Yes. yes. And what's it called? Uh, it's uh, it's Jensen Franklin. I've seen the evangelist. I think it's called A Beautiful Life. The buses are called A Beautiful Life. 
things like that. And then I uh, support the Stroller Foundation. They take people that had chosen life and help them with daycare. They have a daycare there. Uh, so there's all kinds of things that you can do after after you have that baby. You know, there's so many people that say, well, you know, who's going to support them for the next 18 years? Well, there's so many organizations out there that will support those babies and, and help with the daycare while the mother goes to work. You know, the only criteria is that she either has to be in school or she has to work and she gets free daycare. And these are daycares that are godly daycares that are teaching the word of God. Things like that, you know, I, I feel like I feel like we're successful because we we try to support God's ministries, and and with that we also support our men in uniform and police officers and and fire firefighters. Department. That's yeah. right, veterans. So love our guys. No doubt about that. As far as what else you are doing as an individual, mm-hmm. okay, you're, we talked about the business. The business has many facets. Yes, you're there building a business, making a profit. You're helping people along the way. You're employing people. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, now you told us a little bit that you work out in the morning. What else (laughs) do you like to do outside? You don't work 24-7. What else do you like to do? You're also a mother, a wife. So you got a lot of hats in the air. Yes, I do. And, uh, you know, one of the things. How do you keep it all together? You know, my kids are grown. Uh, the last one just moved to California. So, you know, the kids are grown. I have five grandchildren now. My son has three wow. children and my daughter has two, which uh, I tell you, that's the biggest thing about being a mother is becoming a grandmother one day because that, that is awesome. I know you're a grandfather that's as right. well. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's just wonderful, you know, to keep life balanced with my husband. We, we joined a Houston Sports Association, which is uh, a sporting clay so we with we, shotguns, yeah, with we, shooting we, clay. we got into shooting shotguns and found out that we were really quite good at it. And uh, I won tons of trophies just that first year that I started. I, it, I just have a natural eye hand coordination. Yeah. And we got out there and shot this old Belgium, Belgium Browning uh, 20 gauge. And I won a tournament in that. And I thought, wow, wow, this is pretty cool. Maybe we ought to take a lesson or two. And so that my husband and I both got into it at the same time. And uh, we, we do that on the weekends now. We, we do a lot of charity events with that. Um, you know, it just, it's a great thing. Here lately, I have not had the time to do that. But we go to church. We go to Second Baptist. Uh, yeah, lo- I've seen lo- you there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I love my church. I love it's my church there. It's a tremendous church, right? Yeah, Especially they're... the Woodway Campus. My yeah, favorite. That's absolutely. where I go and that's yes. where I see you. Yeah, love my church. Uh, you know, and it's just, it's so wonderful to hear uh, people praying. Just the other day, you know, I'm a member of the choir. And uh, just the other day, uh, one of my friends had a, um, her husband was having a heart attack and the choir stopped. The choir just stopped. I mean, we have 150 people in there. They stopped and prayed for them. And that just touched my heart so much. And my women's group there, I called them. They stopped and prayed. My husband's men's group stopped and prayed. And I mean, it was like 180, 200 people that were praying for him in a blink of an eye. And, and that just, just overwhelms me to know that um, our church is, uh, is truly a praying church. And I love that. And her husband is okay. Came home from the hospital the Sunday, and he's doing well. So, you know, I, I do. I love my church. Uh, there's all kinds of activities there. That's right. There is. I've been a member there, Second Baptist Woodway Campus, since 1991. I remember my son and I joined that Christmas Eve service mm-hmm. way back then. Let's go back to shotguns just for a second, if you would. <laughs> okay. And the reason I'm asking is I have a, a couple guns, and I've shot, and I'm not as good as I thought I was with pistols now. Okay. I haven't okay. I haven't shot a, a shotgun. I have a brand new one that I want to, to take out and shoot, but I always thought I was good with the hand eye. I would hand reach eye. with my right hand, even though I'm left-handed. I would hold the pistol with the right, and there's more to it than meets the mm-hmm. eye. So now I'm imagining to be have any kind of accuracy with a shotgun that's a whole nother thing because you're when you're talking about the clays they they shoot those clays out there right mm-hmm. up in the air and then you have to to bring them down you know it is what's the trick because there's so a timing, easy right? there is a very good trick to this it's very very easy if you can point just take your finger and point and just go across the room and stop somewhere you know if you can point right and see that you can you can shoot a shotgun so when you're driving a car are you looking at the road? No. I'm no. Looking, I'm looking ahead. Okay. That's I'm what, looking where the car's going. Exactly. So you do the same thing with when you turn off a light. Do you Are you looking at the light switch? Or, you know, so there's so many things, uh, you know, that that when, 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 that, when that bird comes out, 
you look at the bird and you stare a hole in that bird. I mean, you want to see the lettering on that bird. If you can see the lettering on that bird and you kind of know where you're going to shoot it because there's a loft. You know, it, it, it may be going in a loft. No, it may be going straight away. Yes. Right. Okay. It may be going straight away. You know, you kind of look where you're going to hit that bird. It, you want to look at the – so you're looking at that front edge. If you want to hit it on the front edge, you look at the front edge as it's going out. Okay. And I tell you, you will not miss it. That is like the number one key. Yeah, there's a stance, you know, put your weight in the front so you don't get kicked back and things like that and, you know, hold it up to your cheek. Ga- you're talking a 20-gauge. Uh, 12, 12 I shoot a 12 gauge. I have the two. The 12 gauge has mm-hmm. a lot of power, right? I mean, yes, it does. But trigger, it, to me, wow. it kicks just as hard as the 20 gauge. I think okay. even I think it's even lighter than the 20 gauge. But so and you know I I've just bought a 12 gauge and have never never you know looked yes. back. I love it. <laughs> there you so go. but but yeah, I can I can I can get you out there shooting in probably 10 or 15 minutes. That know, sounds like fun. Just a couple of the basics, but the the key is looking at the bird. Just Look looking at, at your target. Bird. Don't look at the end of your gun. Don't look at anything else except for that bird when it comes out of the How trap. How about on pistols? A quick word on pistols. Do you shoot pistols at all? Um, I really don't shoot pistols. That's okay. my daughter's question. Okay. <laughs> She's right. a pistol person, but I'm not. So, okay. Meanwhile, gun talk with Judine and Bill right here and flooring talk. Well, we have about, I don't have any minutes left, five minutes or so, give or take. What, what do you want to make sure? Judine Deakle is the owner of Texas Floor Covering. It's texasfloorcovering.com. We work with contractors, facilities, you know, hospitals. We are not really open to the public. So so if there are listeners out there that want to do business with Texas Floor Covering, um, you know, it would be for office spaces or hospital Sure, businesses work. and mm-hmm. things like that. Mm-hmm. And they need floors all the time. So as far as the future, when you look at flooring, mm-hmm. you know, there's going to be floors forever, as far as I know. But what do you see in terms of trends? And you look at your business, you're planning ahead maybe next year, 2024. How do you think about where this is all going? Mm. I mean, surely you think about what's going to happen between now and the end of the year. You probably already have a pretty good idea because your jobs what stack up. Yeah. How, far, how far in advance do the jobs go? Do you have jobs in December? Yes. Planned? Yes. So that's already. Yes. What about next year? I don't think I have anything for next year, although some of the December job might fall into that that uh, into January. But but yeah, just about everything that we're bidding today will be in three or four weeks from now. So what we bid today is is, is going to come to pass in a couple of weeks. You know, we usually have a, a good two week turnaround time for for placing the order and getting it scheduled. When you and you have a, a love for commercial real estate, but also in your world of providing flooring for commercial real estate, you're getting a, you have a feel for what's going on in the commercial world here, at least to some extent. Give us an idea from a real estate standpoint. We hear a whole lot about residential real estate. Your insights as someone providing flooring, what what trends or what are you seeing in commercial real estate right now in Houston? Well, I think a lot of the commercial real estate, so to speak, has slowed down during COVID. I think it's finally coming back a little bit. There are so many people that went home, you know, working from home. So leases shrank. Um, a lot of pieces were leases were given back space. But again, um, you know, a lot of these, um, the commercial space, I think the biggest part of our business throughout that time was through hospital work. So during that time, but it's all it's all coming back now. I feel really good about it. Well, hospitals, I know out in the Katy area, there's there was like, I don't know what the building is, but it seems like they were renovating an, an older hospital building. Yeah. yeah. So I guess those buildings are around. So hospitals need updating all the time, I'm all guessing, time. right? All the time, just like our facilities. Because they, too, have a lot of, they're like Minute Maid, maybe not yeah. quite. They have a lot of people going in and out. They do. They do. They they have quite a bit of stuff. Um, I'm doing something for, you know, a hospital for Memorial Hermann over off of Beach Nut right now that uh, my daughter was born at that hospital. So it's pretty cool to to go back and, you know, do, do things for. Well, speaking of hospitals, where my son was born on the one off of 59. I don't know what it's called. 59, 59 and, and kind of, yeah something like that what's that that's hospital? memorial herman okay yeah, yeah he was born memorial. there yeah, on, on so a sunday <laughs> on a sunday april 17th around six o'clock i think something like that if you're well, listening, i'm not gonna but, tell you what year she was born because then you know how old i am <laughs> well i shouldn't have said that i guess so in the meantime judine before we close the show here we are judine deakle texas floor covering texasfloorcovering.com judine's right here with us knowing what you do about commercial floors let's say there's someone out there and they don't need a commercial floor they don't want a commercial floor but they are thinking about changing their floor covering in their home so knowing what you know about floor coverings give people a little bit of advice before they start getting job quotes 
I, I would, it, it, for residential, I would ask for the bottom line. Don't just get a square foot price, um, you know, um, because that's a lot of haggling there. Uh, if you get a square foot price and you're trying to buy something for your home and then somebody else gives you a little bit lower square foot price, the key is getting that bottom line, get that proposal tax title and license for so that so that you can really compare apples to apples because when you're when you let your fingers do the walking and you're calling uh, different uh, places, they're all going to give you different square foot prices. So don't go with the lowest square. Just foot tell price. me exactly how much it'll be. Exactly. Tur- when can you do key. the job? What is it going to cost to to move my furniture? What is it going to cost to floor prep and take up and all that? Because they'll tell you a square foot price and then and then go in and add a bunch of stuff. So then you're like, oh, you might have you might be paying more than you would have with the other guy that was giving you the. 50 cents higher. And one last thing, if there's someone out there starting a business by themselves, any kind of business, one word of advice for someone just starting out. You know, just do something that you love to do. Do something that you love to do. There you go. Judine Deakle, owner of Texas Floor Covering. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. (laughs) As we move from room to room, building to building, Business to business, we are walking on floors of some type at all times. At Texas Floor Covering, we are there to serve you since 1989, helping you, whether you're an architect, designer, building manager, general contractor, a sports arena, government agency, we are there for your commercial flooring needs. Texas Floor Covering. Give us a call at 713-862-2444. That's 713-862-2444. Our website is texasfloorcovering.com. That's texasfloorcovering.com. Check us out. We are here for you, Texas Floor Covering. Welcome to Successful Living with Bill Nappick. Every week, we talk with interesting people in a variety of professions for ideas to enhance your success in all aspects of life. Successful Living with Bill Napick. Here's Bill Napick. That's right. I am Bill Napick. Thank you so much for listening to the show. And don't forget, you can always go to radiobill.net where you can see past shows, also some of the other shows that I do right there on radiobill.net. And of course, stay with us every week on Sunday. We start at six o'clock, the time of broadcast right here on KPRC. Every week from 6 to 7, right after Real Estate Matters with Stuart Title, which I also host. So stay with us. And again, thanks for listening. Go to RadioBill.net for more information and also where you can not just hear the show, but you can see it right there, RadioBill.net. Thanks again for listening. As we move from room to room, building to building, Business to business, we are walking on floors of some type at all times. At Texas Floor Covering, we are there to serve you since 1989, helping you, whether you're an architect, designer, building manager, general contractor, a sports arena, government agency, we are there for your commercial flooring needs. Texas Floor Covering. Give us a call at 713-862-2444. That's 713-862-2444. Our website is texasfloorcovering.com. That's texasfloorcovering.com. Check us out. We are here for you, Texas Floor Covering.